Hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Uh, and I'm here in San Diego, California. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Ryan Hogarth, who is in Johannesburg, South Africa. Hello, Ryan. Uh, hi there, John. Thanks very much. I am indeed in sunny South Africa. <laughs> and I think it's a, a evening time for you, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so Ryan has established himself over the last number of years as a sought-after global keynote speaker on business change and digital transformation. And so today what we wanted to talk about is one of the subjects that, that he discusses quite often, and that's sales, the new normal. So what do you, what do you mean by the new normal, Ryan? Well, uh, John, I think in every industry, every, well, every aspect of life, I think, is has a new normal. I mean, we're living, we're living it through a period of prolonged transition where the new normal is change. Everything is changing, and as we get, as we get used to things uh, in terms of technology and the way business happens, so it changes again. And there's never a time when we're kind of comfortable with how the world works, with how technology works, with how you know uh, customers now what, what customers expect of the brand they interact with. So really it is, uh, I guess, uh, what I find myself talking about a lot is, well, what is the new normal and how do we, A, prepare for it, deal with it, and hopefully embrace it? Because once well, once we embrace the new normal, then I think then the opportunities start to present themselves. Then, then life gets a little bit more interesting rather than just that feeling of constant uh, you know, where you're not quite there, you're always behind, you're always fighting to just be at square zero. So that's pretty much what the, I guess, the theory of it all is. Um, so when it comes to sales, right, so there has been, uh, there's been a lot of change in sales over the last number of years, probably, you know, some people would argue maybe it's the most rapid change that has been in sales in a long, long time, uh, with, you know, buyer behavior changing with the advent of technology, mm. all of that. So do you think that this is something that uh, when you talk about the new normal, that salespeople have to get used to a rapidly changing world, and it's going to require them to constantly adapt? Absolutely. And, I, and that's probably not, you know, I don't think that's headline news and startling. I, I think we understand that. But probably probably what we're struggling with is is, is the pace of, mm -hmm. of transition, the pace of change. And sales sales has always fascinated me from, from the point of view, you know, if you go to Amazon and search for books that talk about sales, mm -hmm. uh, the last time I did that, I think there's 100,000 titles or more. Yeah, sure. So so clearly it's, it, it's a subject we're obsessed with and it's a subject we're constantly obsessed with because it does evolve. Uh, you know, you just have to look at advertising in the 1950s, TV advertising, you know, buy the cereal and your child will be smarter at school. Mm -hmm. That was easy. You could say whatever you wanted, you know, you, you didn't have to tell the truth. You could just do whatever you wanted. But, you know, we have, we have a far more sophisticated public uh, uh, you know, consumers are a little bit smarter. We're uh, we, we've come to understand. I guess we like everyone likes to think we've we've learned how to counteract every sales technique, uh, which is which is fortunate for for salespeople, not entirely true. But but their behavior has evolved. Their expectations have evolved. Their access to information has evolved, which is which is what has brought on this this uh, this urgent need for for rapid evolution. And, and it can be it can be a little bit daunting, you know, because there is there is so much going on. And you go, let's take social media, and you go, uh, you know, every salesperson has probably been told you need, you know, you've got to use social media. Well, what does that mean? And what social media? You know, there's there's a new one every day, and you know, now we're hearing, you know, Facebook's terrible. We, we're all supposed <laughs> to delete our Facebook accounts now. So so where does so where does that leave us? Um, so so I think. Uh, from a point of uh, coming back to your question, yes, there's a need to rapidly evolve. But at the same time, I think there is room to, you know what, take a breath and understand your market, where you are, who you're trying to talk to, and then find out how you build the relationships you need to and what technology, what uh, sort of evolution and sales method or, or whatever exists and what's going to work for you. Because, uh, I mean, as, as you well know, and every salesperson listening to this knows, uh, there isn't a one size fits all. There isn't one magic thing. We all thought social media would be the magic bullet, and it wasn't. As Sadly, we're all working as hard <laughs> as we've always, uh, even if we are using social media. So I think that's my mm -hmm. point. So yes, uh, learn to adapt, be willing to adapt, be excited about change in, in your industry and the sales profession at large, but also uh, 
yeah, take a breath, relax, and yeah, I, find I, find what's right for you. Yeah, and I think that's a I think that's an excellent point because um, I think there's one byproduct. Let's talk a little bit about what you just said there. I think yes, uh, consumers and buyers have access to a lot of uh, a lot more information than they ever did. So that's a mm. that's a, a pro for them. They also have access to a lot of information that they didn't have before, which can also be a con because now they're overwhelmed, right? Mm. Uh, so um, there is still that opportunity, right, for a sale person to really help uh, buyers cut through the noise, right? Because let's face it, we're all so bombarded today. You know, what is fascinating is is what what was predicted about technology and what has actually come to pass. Um, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, there was a prediction of all sorts of things. In the conference industry, it was, you know, the conference industry is going to die because we're all just video conference and we won't need to get together. In sales, it was, well, it's all going to be websites and internet and individual access to information. Salesmen are dead. There is, there's never going to be the need for salesmen. If you're a salesman, start finding another industry yeah. because you're going to be extinct. Yet the truth of the matter is, and, and you've and you've alluded to this, is the more technological we become, the more important relationships become. Mm-hmm. And sales have always been built on relationships. We know this. Just the nature of how we build them and how we manage them and massage them and 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 extend them, uh, you know, those methods I think is what's evolving with technology. But absolutely, you know, I mean, we've seen in the last couple of years with fake news. I mean, if you go through your social feeds and you don't know what to believe anymore, you know, and, yeah. you know, is this true? Is that true? And so, so if I'm looking to buy something, if I'm looking for information on something I'm going to need, whether it's a car or um, a flight or, you know, several million dollars worth of equipment, uh, the information online is, it's scary. Yeah. Because yes, of course, I've got access to it. I can get reviews. I can get that. And I can probably get a lot of info. But when it comes down to it, I'm going to want to have a human being that I know I can trust. and, And that I think is the nub is built, you know, becoming that trusted advisor, becoming the person I go to because I know, I know you and I trust you and I know that what you tell me will be the truth. So how do you get to that point uh, of trusted advisor? Because I agree completely with you. And even now, I mean, you look on, on Amazon and you look at a product and you see all these five star reviews, but you know, <laughs> there's 20 of them have been posted in the last two days and you go, come on. Really? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so how do you become that, that trusted advisor? How do you cut through the noise and reach out and really connect with the buyer and show them that you can, you can really help them? I think it's – well, firstly, there's two – well, there's two things I think, and, and, and it's true in sales. It's true everywhere you go, which is time and patience. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't become a trusted advisor tomorrow. You don't become an influencer tomorrow. You don't become uh, someone of stature within the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're building a relationship um, – you know, that first interaction, you know, I might like you the first time we speak. This is the first time we've spoken. Yeah. And I'm and, I, and I'm thinking, okay, Joe, he seems like a legit kind of guy and, <laughs> and whatever. But but if you now pitched me something to buy from you, I'd be like, yeah, I'm not too sure yet. Yeah. But but perhaps our interaction, you know, next week and the month after. So so it might take six months or eight months, but but it's your constant presence. And and that's what social media has given us. You know, uh, in the old days we had a Rolodex, mm-hmm. and and if you had and if you had five hundred potential clients, it was very difficult to interact with more than forty of them in a month. You know, you work in the phones. Hey, John, how are the kids? You've been fishing. How's it going? Um, but w- social media gives us the means to 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 connect with a lot more people and have a and have a constant presence with them a lot more regularly so when the time comes for a personal interaction you're not starting from your last conversation 5 years ago so back to my point i think it's 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 time and patience you know we we're all having so we're all having to produce content and be writers or whatever and so if people have connected with you on on linkedin or um, or or Twitter, whatever your chosen platforms are, or if you've got Salesforce and it's email or whatever it is, um, how it is done is it's built through time, you know. And so trust is tested on a small thing, and then a bigger thing, and a bigger thing, and then eventually it's like, okay, good, I know this is the guy. But um, you know, we're weary of the person who's been in sales for three weeks, you know, and he's full of enthusiasm, and you go, you know what, this guy, he just doesn't feel like he's got 
the the depth of knowledge and the empower. It doesn't feel like he's empowered to do what's right for me. But but you know what? I've been I've been working with Jane or John or whatever for the last three years, and every time I've needed something, even when it didn't involve money or a sale, right. and I was just struggling. You know, he or she were there and you know helped me out, and and so I think that's how it's done. And uh, and I mean, it's ama- it's amazing that the lesson we constantly learn is that nothing happens quickly. Yeah. We do actually have to work at it. We do actually have to slowly and painfully build things. And uh, but that's how we do it. Yeah, and it's and it's funny because if you think about it, that that message, which I totally agree with, by the way, mm. run, runs counter to the pervasive culture today, which everything is shortcut. It's frenetic. It's fast. It's mm. you know immediate gratification. Um, so in many ways, what you're saying is salespeople need to take a step back from this and realize that if you want to move from just being another, as you say, somebody just pitching and making noise, if mm. you want to move into that trusted zone, you're going to have to dedicate the time and the patience. So, so um, you know, given the fact that it's running counter to, you know, popular culture, the pervasive culture, um, that's a challenge, right? That's a challenge for salespeople, well, it's a challenge for sales managers. I will say this, and I think what what answers the question of you know instant gratification, we need what we want now and we want it quickly and all of that sort of thing is I think your responsibility as a sales manager or as a salesperson, you know, we, we have to make it easy for people to interact with us. Right. And that's where we where we get a sense of that instant, you know, so if so if if you have a customer that tweets you, you can't get back to them in two or three days. You know, it's gotta it's gotta be it's gotta be fairly quick. Mm-hmm. And if they and if they want if they want to ask a question or if they want to buy something or are you making that easy? So so yes, we, we've spoken about taking a step back and take the time to build something, but in the meantime Make it easy for people. You know, if people, you want your 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 customers to fall over and be talking to you and fall over and be buying from you. So, so I think that's where we address the 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 popular drive of you know right now and busy and instant and all of that. Make your communication instant. Right. You know, if if, if a customer wants to get hold of you, make it easy for them. Don't tell them to send you a fax or you know send you a very complicated email, which you know you'll only get back to them next week. You know, you, you want that sense of you're there, you're there, and you don't have to be there instantly, but you want that sense of you're there and available. Right. Um, so. And I think that's where the technology helps is, mm-hmm. you know, automate what you can and, and, and have systems there where they, you know, they can click and tap and swipe. You know, if there's if there's common questions, you know, then have an FAQ that they can find easily and answer the question. Because a lot of time people are happy to do that, yeah. uh, you know, if they don't, you know, but they know it's coming from you and you've made it easy and you're always there for the personal contact when that becomes important. So what are some of the other ways that says people can differentiate themselves today? Do you- you think you know given you know the fact that there's uh, things are coming at us from all different directions what are some ways that I could stand out if I was trying to sell to you for instance you know I think it's when you talk in sales it's such a hard question just be given the scope of sales sure. and how and you know I was talking to some people in the airline industry yesterday and, and talking about selling or, or, or the role of a um, uh, of a travel agent today, which which is so different, uh, you know. In the old days, it was really just uh, the, the travel agent was a middleman, yeah. uh, middle person. So it was easy. I need tickets, great. I've got access to, and the role was very clear. And I mean, I don't want to say it was easy, but it was very clearly defined. Whereas today, there are so many options in travel, but there are but there are different kinds of. Travelers, you know, if I have to make a, tri- a domestic trip next week and it's urgent, something's come up, I've got to fly to another city. Well, there's there's a web there's websites I can go to that will source get my t- uh, you know six minutes I can have a ticket booked paid for and I'm on my way and I'm happy to do that. But if I'm traveling to Europe or to the United States and it's a sort of multi city visit mm-hmm. and you know, now I'm going, whoa, 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 this is getting complicated. There's hotels, there's transfers, there's – now I want someone mm-hmm. I know and trust that will take care of that for me and that I know if I get stuck at Dallas Airport that I can phone them and say, dude, I've got a problem and and that problem will be addressed. So I feel like I'm answering your question in a very sort of no, long-winded no, way. But, 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 the, but the standing out is going to come to your the way – 
<laughs> you personally have a relationship with your customers, and and it's and, and I'm, uh, it might be a little unfair because of the nature. Some some sales, a lot of sales, could be transactional, but you know certainly where the sales is built around a customer base that will be with you for some time, then then it's. Well, I wouldn't say easier, but but at least the the path is a lot clearer. Whereas if it's transactional, that can be hard. And I think in in that case where where sales are a lot more transactional, you want a lot of people saying, you know, I spoke to John. He sorted out my problem in you know in five minutes. Right. He was efficient. He was awesome. He answered my questions, and bang, I got what I needed. It was sorted out. And there you want you know the, the five star reviews in in as legitimate a way as possible. Um, but you will get that from uh, and you've got to have a digital presence. So from your social feeds, I get a sense of, firstly, you've been around for a while, that, uh, and other people have said their interaction with you was very good. So maybe there's there, there has to be a little bit of effort in encouraging your customers to to give you the five star review, and that can be awkward. None of us mm-hmm. liked, you know, hey John, how was my interview? Was I good? Can you go and <laughs> can you go and write a review and, and say how awesome I was? Um, but that has to be part of it because that's how. Uh, you know, we, we are uh, uh, because we're bombarded with a lot. I don't have time to. I don't have twenty minutes to find out everything about John Golden. You know, I kind of have to take a little bit on yeah. faith and then and and see that there is a track record. There's a presence. I go, okay, this guy seems legit. We can move <laughs> forward. Well, luckily yeah. for me, it only takes five minutes. So. <laughs> 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 um, so just before we're bumping up to the end of our time, so just before we go, yes. um, what are, what are uh, maybe one last um, challenge or opportunity you see facing sales in the in the new normal? Um, okay, well, I think I think the challenges are well, the challenges are fairly well known. I think you know it's 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 the fact that they're competition is at a level that it's never been but it's, uh, uh, it's access people have access they can do things and if you know if i can't get what i need from you well fine there's there's 500 other people i'll go right. to so but again that's where the opportunity is and at, at the risk of repetition it's if you're established as a a person with clear knowledge, a person who has a track record of doing everything for their customer, making their customers' lives easier, even when it doesn't involve a sale, you know, when it's just, I have a question about this, I need help with that. Um, when you're that sort of, I guess it's being available. And maybe that's, that's as, a, as one catch word, is be available. And that doesn't mean working 24 hours a day and taking calls at three in the morning. But have you established channels where if your customer is struggling at three in the morning, that where they could go and get help somewhere, uh, you know, online or uh, whatever it is, and in the morning you could get hold of them. But there's a sense that if I need help, you're there. And I I think that becomes a very important differentiator because you are helping to remove a bit of the clutter that we've already spoken about. Yeah, I, I, I like that idea. I like that concept of being available and then when they do contact you is being in the moment right if you can combine both of those i think you're on a winner uh, mm. because number one if the people can get in contact with you when they need to or you've given them a mechanism and then when they actually do communicate with you that you're actually mm. present <laughs> and that's a great one because you know yeah you're on the phone but i'm getting a whatsapp i've yeah. got a tweet i've got another phone call so so it can be it, it, that can be challenging but when you when you do get it right it's fabulous I, you know uh, as a consumer our greatest frustration is when people don't talk to us i've got a question there's nowhere to get the question answered i send you a tweet no one answers uh, it's like geez you know really I, somebody help me i'm yeah i want to spend my money <laughs> i know yeah especially when you're lost in that press one for this now press two for that. <laughs> Yeah, press three for this. You just forgot to say. And then when you get through to somebody, they ask you to all the information that you already entered again. Right? <laughs> yeah, just, so just to stick at home. All right, listen, Ryan, this has been a great conversation. Before we go, I'd love you to just tell our, our viewers and listeners a little bit more about you, how they can learn more about you and contact you. Um, okay, cool. Well, I guess the easiest is always the website, ryanhogarth.com. Um, you know, I speak, I write, and I host a podcast on the new normal, you know, telling stories about uh, about the new normal in all sorts of industries and, and, and uh, uh, walks of life and jobs and social and all that sort of thing. But uh, everything about that, ryanhogarth.com is the easiest way, and I'm always keen to hear from people. 
Great. Listen, thanks again, Ryan. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for an expert interview uh, very soon. Thank you. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.